my friends welcome to lectures by professor shilpa kanthri babbar today's lecture is going to be our last lecture on the deviant theory we are going to be dealing with the subcultural theory today and in subcultural theory with specific reference if you will see on the screen we shall be dealing with two theorists albert cohen his work delinquent boys and richard Clo uh, cloward and lloyd oblin and their work delinquency and opportunity we move on first to albert cohen albert cohen status frustration theory the reference which i have cited here is from taylor and francis online their journal deviant behavior volume 39 2018 publication issue number 6 you just need to click on this particular link once it's put up on the blog for your reference uh albert cohen is primarily an american criminologist and a student of uh, robert morton as well as edwin sutherland and it so goes for obvious reasons that his theory would have reflection of both morton's strain theory as well as edwin sutherland's learning theory before i begin with or in continuation with these influences we also need to understand that there is a similarity as well as a difference between the subcultural theory and john hagen's power control theory which we did while we did the labeling theory in john hagen's power control theory there was if you remember when we did the labeling theory i told you that hagen felt that self control is innately absent in human being and there are two ways in which regulation is possible by the society either through direct control which is exercised through a family or through indirect control which is exercised through educational op opportunities or educational goals however when both of them are absent there is bound to be deviance in that background what we need to see is that and if you will focus on the board on this particular screen you will understand that why in john hagen's theory it was the lack of either the direct control or the indirect control which actually led to deviance but in subcultural theory deviance is not due to absence of any control deviance is primarily due to a pull factor a pull from the peer group which encourages individuals to commit crime so i'm sure that at the outset itself the clarity is there how uh, it is different subcultural theory is different from power control theory on similar lines it is also essential to understand that how subcultural theory is different from merton's strain theory now there is no doubt about the fact that merton's strain theory has exercised a lot of influence on albert cohen specifically not that it has not exercised influence on other subculturalists uh, theorists however it has exercised influence on albert cohen uh, however if you will observe that in merton's theory there is a, a deviance because uh the ability to achieve a utilitarian goal an instrumental goal of making money of making material success is not available through institutionalized means and therefore those deprived individuals they become deviant however in the subcultural theory the deviance is for non utilitarian reasons also it could be as non utilitarian as say for example vandalism as say for instance joy ride so we need to understand if you will focus on the screen that the strain theory is talking about deviance uh, being viewed as very responses to achieve a culturally prescribed goals all of which were utilitarian in nature 
future. However, the subcultural theory, it is providing an explanation for non-utilitarian crimes also, that is, crimes which have no specific cause, such as vandalism and joy die. With this, uh, let's hit the bullseye, the text, Delinquent Boys, the Culture of the Gang. Now, in this particular book, what Cohen is trying to say is that the culture of the middle class white collar worker and that of the lower class laboring uh, class or the working class is very distinct. So, if you will see in the entirety of this particular book, which is Delinquent Boys, uh, the focus is primarily on two uh, set of uh, subcultures, two set of groups, if I might modify myself. One group which belongs to the elite, the white collared middle class uh, uh, members, their families, especially the boys, especially the youth, uh, teenage boys. And the other is the lower the working class uh, families and uh, uh, especially their boys. Now, uh, the entire focus in uh, this particular text is on the difference in the two cultures and how this difference is creating a problem, how is difference, this difference is pushing the lesser, that is the lower working class families, especially the teenage boys, to the margins and pushing them into frustrations and subcultures. So let us focus at it one by one and see that the first thing which Cohen is taking in his work is that uh, the deviance uh, is basically arising from the fact that the culture of the middle class white collar workers and that of the lower or laboring class has definite differences. When the teenage male children of both these classes they mingle together in the school because both of them belong to the same school. They go to the same school. Uh, then what happens is this conflict becomes very, very apparent. And to make things worse in the community, these two children are judged by same standards. Standards which are primarily derived from the middle class uh, behavioral patterns. So if you try and see what is basically happening is that there are two distinct cultures but the members, the teenage boys of those two distinct cultures are going to the same schools, they are facing the same community and the moral entrepreneurs of those particular communities are belonging to the middle class population because of which the teenage males of the lower and the laboring class are at a disadvantage. Now what kind of a disadvantage it is, we shall soon come to this particular disadvantage. So when these boys are studying together in the same school, they have two roads ahead for themselves with specific reference to the boys of the lower and the laboring class. The first road is what is referred to as the college boy pattern road, while the other is the collar boy pattern road. Now the college boy pattern road is followed by a very few set of uh, children because it stresses on individual mobility and is a difficult path. While the other, which is the corner boy pattern road, it stresses conformance to the group and it is much easier. So it goes without saying that most of the young males from the working class, they opt for the corner boy pattern uh, success, which is conforming to the group rather than to the individual ideas of mobility. Now, under this kind of a standard uh, which has been laid down by the middle class population, it becomes very difficult for the lower class children to attain any form of recognition as a result of which they lose status 
and not only do they lose status in the group, they also develop a feeling of inferiority which ends up in a loss of respect for these particular children. They are pushed to the margins, they develop frustrations over socio-economic roadblocks which creates in them a sense of personal failure and inadequacy and this is what Cohen refers to as creating in them status frustration. Therefore, they out of this status frustration, they end up developing a subculture of their own. And in this particular subculture, not only as a consequence of this subculture, but also the cause of this subculture lies in the fact that they resisted the class structure, they rejected the socially acceptable values and patterns of acceptable so-called conventional behavior by creating their own standards of judgment and they just not rejected it, they also reversed it. It's very essential to understand this tripartite movement. They resisted the class structure wherein the mainstream structure, that's the middle class structure, had decided that unfair stratified structure from, for them. They not just resisted it, they rejected it. They did not stop at rejection. They also reversed this particular set of values. Now what is basically happening is that uh, when we talk about uh, a reversal, what is basically happening in reversal is we shall uh, soon understand in the next slide that in this particular reversal, since they lack the means to achieve social status along conventional lines, they, that is the groups and the gangs, they inverted the conventional expectations in terms of which status is achieved. So interestingly, they started offering positive rewards for inverting conventional values. So what is happening here is that they started internalizing traditionally symbolic stereotypes of unrestrained masculinity, such as in the form of physical violence, sexual exploits, etc. Let me give you an example of positive rewards for inverting conventional values. Take for instance that in a conventional society, the status is conferred for academic achievement. But in the subculture, status would be conferred for academic failure. Status may be gained by intimidating others, by breaking the rules of the school, by breaking the norms, by causing troubles in general. Cohen concludes his work by stating that this kind of a deviant behavior, this pattern of rejecting mainstream value and forming delinquent subculture first started in the school, first starts in the school, in the formative years of the school and then becomes more serious taker later taking on the forms of truancy and possibly gang membership. With this, I move on to the second thinker for the day, that is a pair, uh, Clover, Richard Clover and Lloyd Oholin, and their work, Delinquency and Opportunity, a Theory of Delinquent Gang. The reference for this is a link from Washington University, you could once again click on this and it is available for you. Now, basically, Clover and Oholin, they further elaborated on Merton's train theory and they said that deviant behavior and crime in particular was not just a response to limited institutionalized means of success which was put across by Merton's strain theory but also was a result uh, of an increased access to illegitimate opportunity structures. This is very essential to understand that he sees 
the cause of deviant behavior in two things. One which was proposed by Merton, that is the response to limited institutionalized means, and the other which he added, they added in fact, that's the increased access to illegitimate opportunity structures. What are these illegitimate opportunity structures? We will get back to it. But before that, once again, let's revisit America while sitting in our own geographies. Uh, he says, the American culture makes morally mandatory the seeking of success goals. But the morally acceptable means to these success goals are distributed differentially. So what is happening is, in countries like America, there tends to be an increased gap between culturally universalized goals and structurally limited means. And this creates a strain among the lower class youth who also aspire to economic advancement, but because of limited institutionalized means, they are unable to advance. Such strain and alienation lead to the formation of delinquent subcultures among such boys once again who blame the system rather than themselves for their impending or actual failure. Now, uh, before I move ahead, what we need to understand is, and I will be addressing it in the end of this particular uh, lecture today, that uh, there is uh, somehow an overemphasis in the subcultural theory over masculinity. Uh, and there is an emphasis on, uh, which I do uh, understand to an extent that young boys, uh, they tend to move or drift towards deviance because they are in the formative years, there's a hormonal change. However, this overemphasis on masculinity has actually put the uh, females and the cure subculture uh, to a side, in fact, to margins. Therefore, we need to be alert while we are trying to understand the particular theory. However, let's get back to this particular slide uh, with what we just discussed, that it is basically a strain and alienation uh, which is leading to formation of delinquent subcultures, especially amongst the boys. Uh, with this, we move on to the next slide, uh, where uh, basically what are they trying to say is that uh, they are saying that a delinquent culture uh, develops depending upon two things. Number one is what is the nature of the local neighborhood. That means, is that local neighborhood an established ground for deviance or is it not an established ground for deviance? And the other is the availability of illegitimate opportunities. Uh, in, this, uh, in, in a sense that uh, stable crime careers, are they existing as models? Are they existing as uh, training grounds? And this is especially uh, with respect to neighborhoods like the inner cities where a poor person can become involved easily in prostitution, robbery, drug dealing, loan sharking to make money because the neighborhood has a history of delinquency. So the delinquent subculture, it depends on both of these. The, uh, the historicity of the local, local neighborhood in terms of delinquency and the availability of illegitimate opportunities. On these bases, he divides delinquent subcultures into three forms. One which is referred to as criminal, the other which is referred to as a conflict subculture and the third which is referred to as the retreatist subculture. Now the criminal subculture, uh, in terms of the neighborhood, it appears in a neighborhood which is usually very highly established in terms of organization of adult crimes and provides uh, a lot of illegitimate opportunity structures for youth to learn how to behave criminally for material success. So if you will observe that, 
both these criteria are successfully filled and established neighborhood and a high availability of illegitimate opportunities both these criteria are very well available uh, for the building of or building ground for a uh, criminal subculture the second is conflict subculture now conflict subculture develops in neighborhoods which are highly disorganized why because here you will hardly find any illegitimate opportunities available uh, and uh, for this uh, the, how does a young boy learn to form gangs uh, because what is happening is that he is undergoing frustrations he is undergoing demoralization but there is no way to express the frustration about the lack of normative opportunity structures in the neighborhood and i will give you a very cute example illustration for this and this illustration is one of my favorite tv serials malgudi days malgudi days uh, is a 1986 serial uh, at least when i was a young girl i watched it very consistently with a lot of fun it is based on rk narayanan's work and uh, if you will see uh, the couple of friends with swami who is uh, was popularly known as, known as uh, chami by his uh, grandmother and here is uh, uh, one boy uh, referred to as in this particular work as uh, money who was powerful but lazy bully and uh, the second one is from another illustration because i could not find rajam available here this is rajam uh, rajam is basically a fearless intelligent and a wealthy boy now uh, what the point which i was trying to say is that in malgudi days uh, you will find a unique development of a conflict subculture because swami is very fascinated uh, to money because uh, money is uh, uh, you know a breakaway kind of a character shown in malgudi days uh, moving towards the margins of the society uh, and uh, however uh, rajam is conformist so money is uh, you know drifting back and forth between rajam and uh, money and uh, this leads to uh, development of uh, conflict culture because it is very attractive to move towards deviance than not uh, uh, we revert back to my previous slide uh, the third form of delinquent subculture is a retreatist dr uh, drug using subculture which develops amongst persons who are double failures now why does they refer to them as double failures they are double failures for simple reason that uh, they are uh, built up or uh, groomed up in a family where uh, there are uh, prohibitions against violence or theft that means the culture in those uh, working class families is very highly influenced by a non deviant middle class culture and so these children are unable to express themselves they are not given a voice to express themselves and at the same time they are also deprived of objective availabilities of uh, socio economic ladder to climb up for material success so they are sandwiched between the conventional values and they are sandwiched between a lack of success and this leads to a double failure compelling them to retreat into a drug using culture with this uh, we also quickly wrap up with uh, uh, clover and ohlin however before i wrap up, wrap up i would like each one of you to understand uh, through the last slide what we have done till now uh, generically speaking i've labeled it as characteristics of a subculture the reference has been cited here uh, these characteristics uh, would not just summarize what we have done today they would also help you to critically think the first characteristic is that the subcultural theories have been 
focusing on economically lower sections or the working population and because of this very often people have been saying that there is an over emphasis on class now uh, if uh, if you would have an understanding of the marxian uh, 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 you know perspective towards the study of the society you will realize that it was an economically deterministic theory where the focus was uh, on the haves not on the deprived sections on the lower communities on the working class and there was a constant reminder that the ruling ideas were the ideas of the rule, ruling class so somehow uh, through sociological imagination we could also see uh, you know a shadow of marxian perspective on the subcultural theory because here also we see that there is a constant bias or a prejudice whether you say towards or against the lower class is is your uh, perspective of visualizing subcultural theory uh, the second feature that we need to focus on is and which i have discussed uh, while running through the lecture is that uh, masculine or male dominance has been over emphasized because of which there has been an under representation of any female or queer subculture the third is the uh, uh, feature called marginalized the moral entrepreneurs decide who shall be the member of the society and who shall be denied the membership thereby pushing some to the margins and societal periphery and these marginalized are those who create their subcultures the fourth feature is resistance throughout the subcultural theories you shall find that there is some form of resistance for the other either manifest or latent towards the dominant hegemonic institutionalized cultural practices or practices of the privilege the fifth is the collective behavior so the characteristic pattern of a delinquent gang behavior has been that of a collective reaction to problem or dissatisfaction rather than an action at an individual level the sixth feature is loose and informal participation subcultures please remember do not have a defined contoured membership nor do they have an explicit organizational structure they have contested and fluid boundaries and the last feature of the subcultural theories is a focus on eternal or if i may say internal bonds and use these two terms interchangeably members of a subculture not only share an identity but also share certain values they share certain common practices they share certain common objectives it is because of this uh, feeling of an innate sense of connection it is because of this feeling of of weness of a collective agency that this particular subcultural group has an immensely strong uh, binding and uh, i shall conclude today's lecture with a very interesting example of a subculture example from the world of harry potter where harry potter fans often use the word muggles a word which means non wizards in harry potter books this muggles word is used to denote individuals who are not a part of the harry potter subculture and they stand in opposition to potter heads who signify fans in the subculture so uh, being the fans of uh, at least the uh, subculture of harry potter world i'm sure or or popular uh, serials like flash and legends uh, uh, aro uh, all those are subcultures and uh, uh, in this context we are also creating our own subculture a uh, subculture of sociology and uh, i hope you are enjoying this particular intellectual subculture with this uh, we uh, call it a day and we are ending our theories on deviance and would be moving on to newer topics
from uh, tomorrow onwards when it comes to our new YouTube lectures. God bless you. Uh, stay safe and take care. Uh, do subscribe to my YouTube channel for notifications and follow me on my blog. Take care.